Hey you guys, it's Natalie. Today I thought I would show you what happened in between clips of the podcast. I thought you might get a kick out of some of the ridiculous things I do like recheck my lip gloss and look at my teeth and make sure my hair is okay. I especially had like a super itchy nose today. I don't know what that was about. Anyway, let's get to the podcast. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to episode 66 of the Love and Stitches podcast. It is a beautiful sunny day here in North Texas, and I'm excited to get to share with you some of my makes today. But first, this podcast is a collaboration with Marina, who is um, from the Pineapple Knits podcast. She also is the dyer behind Pineapple Yarn. She's got gorgeous, bright colors. Um, she is a wife and mom living in uh, South Carolina, and you can just tell her colors are in inspired by the coast. Um, she used to live in Hawaii and I don't know, I, whenever I think of her, I just think of bright, fun, beautiful colors. Um, so I will have all of the links to uh, Marina's different places down below. I will have her shop, her Instagram, um, her YouTube channel, and of course her episode that we are collaborating on. So we are both gonna answer the same five questions for you. I will be answering them later in my um, notes segment and I will let you know um, when Marina's podcast is coming out, but I am very, very excited for this. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started today. So, oh, there was one more thing I was gonna say about Marina. She is making candles now, and I did not know that until I watched her latest episode, so I cannot wait to go check out her candles because that's super unique. I love that. Okay, let's start with finished objects. So I have finished um, two mini yarn cozies, <laughs> which I feel like they barely count as finished objects, but I have finished them. Um, I finished this cute little self-striping. This is the 20 gram mini yarn cozy, the self-striping version. And this is um, Malia Made It in Disney Princess Parade. And then I finished another one of my rainbows. Oh my goodness, Toaster is chewing on a bone over here. I'm sure that's loud. Hey bud, Toaster. Can you, can you take that upstairs, buddy? <laughs> I wish you could see his face right now, it's so funny. But this is one of my rainbow mini yarn cozies. I will show you the rest of the rainbow that I have here in a second. And I have finished up another one. I think I started this Sunday and finished it um, in a day or two, so which is awesome. So that's it for finished objects, really, really not much, but I have cast on another mini yarn cozy. I did this just this morning um, and I've done like two rows, <laughs> two rounds. So I'm trying to make my way like color order through the rainbow. So what I have left here, and I'm alternating them too. So this orange one was the faux cables version and my yellow one is just gonna be um, simple ribbed. And then next I will have green, which again will go to cables, and then dark green, and then I've got two shades of blue. I can't remember which order. I decided in like purple and, um, what is this color? Like berry? I don't know. Um, but these are the ones I have left. So I have one I just cast on plus six more, so seven cozies to go. So we'll see, I'm trying to make my way through them before starting a new design, um, just to get those done because, I don't know, no reason, just rules I'm imposing on myself. But I think they're gonna look so cute. So I think I've already done five, maybe that's my fifth one. Yeah, I think there's 12 colors total. So it's gonna be the cutest little picture when I'm all done and one day, maybe I'll wind up a bunch of 20 gram um, little skeins, put them all in the cozies, and I think that's gonna be just too cute. Um, now, I have another whip here, and I haven't done much to it because I'm about to start another pair of socks, which I have not done in a long time, but these are, let's see. Oh yeah, here's the, there's the little cozies that I finished so far. Um, this yarn is 
Now I've got two of these in here. It is Jelly Belly from Mustache Yarns. You're gonna see another Mustache Yarns here in a second. And it's just so bright and fun and great for the summer. But I'm actually about to put these kind of on hold because I have another pair of socks that I'm going to cast on. So I might even have to take these needles out because I don't have, I only have three of these um, size one needles and normally that's all I need. But right now every project that I'm doing needs size one 32 inch needles. Even my sweater needed them for a little bit, my cozies, and then I'm gonna start another pair of socks and I'd like to have them both going at the same time. So this might actually go into a holder for a little while and just hang out. But you can see I've done, I don't even think I did that in the last week. I think I did that before the last podcast, but these are going to go away for a little while and they'll come back when I'm done with my next pair of socks. So why don't I go ahead and show you those? Man, we're gonna blow through this today. I do have lots of questions, so that will be fun. So I have wound up my Harry Potter sock yarn. So I talked about this last week. Um, I am hosting with my friend Carolyn, who is Basic Baha'i. Um, we are hosting a Harry Potter summer reading challenge. It just started on June 1st, so jump in if you can. Um, but we are hosting a summer read along where the goal is to read all seven Harry Potter books in June and July. So it's nine weeks seven books and basically a book per week but there are some like catch-up weeks in there so if you're starting late you should be just fine um i thought it would be fun to knit some harry potter socks so this yarn is also from mustache i think i pulled it out and it is the boy who lived so what this is going to do this is this is how her yarn comes in perfect match skeins and it is going to stripe up in uneven stripes, eight uneven stripes that represent each of the eight books, because there is an eighth book, The Cursed Child, um, but I, I don't consider that part of the original series because um, it's just different. But it matches the colors kind of of like the, the spines of those books, and then the, the width of the stripe kind of represents the length of the book, which is just so smart. I just thought that was so cool. So I have knit a pair of these socks before for my friend, um, but I haven't knit a pair for myself. So I'm excited to do that. And I did get a mini and I have my first opportunity to really truly use my 20 gram um, mini yarn cozy for a project. I did test it out, of course, in testing and make sure it worked with my granny stripe blanket, but I haven't used it for a project yet. So I'm excited about that. And this color here, I know it's not very easy to see, but it is called Weasley Burrow. So when she had this yarn, she might still have it. There were three choices, Diagon Alley, Hogwarts, and Weasley Burrow, and that's the one that I got. So that will be the heels of this sock, I believe. So super excited to get those started. I am being slow to cast them on because I'm trying to do a really quick like IGTV tutorial on um, tips for knitting self-striping socks because goodness knows that I need the tips more than anybody because I keep making silly mistakes on self-striping socks. So I'm going to compile that and put that on IGTV um, sometime here soon. Just make sure you're following me so that you uh, can see that. And I'm really tempted to make some cozies for these guys because now I feel like I can't knit from cakes without cozies. Usually I would just wind these into um, a ball, but I might actually take the cozies off my other sock and use them instead of knitting up to new cozies because I want to get started on the sock. So we'll see. I don't know. I haven't made the plans yet, but I am ready, um, ready for that project. And that will probably be what I knit on in the mornings when I am listening to the Harry Potter books every day because I'm trying to do like two to three chapters every day. Okay, lastly, we have Lilium, which I am very, very excited to show you because I have made some good progress on Lilium. Lilium is a top. It is from um, Pippin Pin, who is Megan Nodecker, and I have sleeves, you guys, and I've tried it on again, so I just, I can't wait to tell you all about it. Let me show you the yarn just as a reminder real quick. Um, this is uh, called Darlin by Gritty Knits. It is a wool cotton blend, 50-50, and the colorway is Josephine. I really like this color. Um, I feel weird saying this, but I think it looks good on me. Like, I feel like it's kind of 
my color in a way. Um, and I don't know, I, like, I think it looks really good. So I've tried this on, I've split the, the body and um, on two needles and tried it on and it's, the fit is, it's a little tight, I think. Um, I don't know if it's tight because it's tight or it's just not how I'm used to wearing sweaters or tops, which I think is what it is. Cause I mean, like, look at this top, it's, it's huge. Um, but I still really, really like it. And I know that when I block it, I'm gonna get like some extra ease and drape and it's just gonna be so beautiful. So it's got this, uh, these adorable little sleeves that you do, um, short rows, which were really, really easy to do. Um, so I've done all the hard parts. The top is totally done. Now I just have to knit through the body, do a little bit of ribbing on the bottom, bind off, and I'm good to go. So that's so exciting. Now the body is moving actually really, really fast. Um, even though it's quite a lot of stitches and then I'm increasing every so often to give it an A-line shape, which is part of the pattern, um, but works perfectly for me it's going really fast. And I did wanna say I am doing helical knitting. I was concerned with this being a cotton yarn that the, the helical part would show up more, but actually it hasn't at all. I don't see a single instance of like visible, hold on, I'm getting so tangled up. So where are we here? Here's the beginning of round. These are increases. They're a different type of increase. I'm still kind of learning them. I seem to have mastered one side while not really mastering the other. And then this is where I was like changing yarn. So that's that's a little messier than I'd like. But other than that, do you see, I don't see at all like any visible signs that I'm changing the yarn every row. Here's my other yarn way over here. So I think it's doing a really good job. And then of course I don't have any carries up the um, beginning of round. So helical knitting working out great. And I'm just doing that to blend the two yarns together. Um, they're the same color, but since they're hand dyed, I think that it's always great if you can to blend them in. So once I finish, as you can tell, they're different. Once I finish up this one, I will continue with just this yarn and that should work just fine. I don't really see, well, I guess cause I'm blending them, but at least it'll be like skein number one, one and two and then two at the bottom. So hopefully that'll work out. I did use the second skein on the sleeves and I don't know, I don't think you can tell. So hopefully it will just stay that way. But Lilium looking super good. I was, so I did the sleeves since last week and then I was right here on the body. So I've done a few inches of body and I am using a technique um, called running stitch markers, which I've done before in crochet. Um, where I am using a length of yarn, a different yarn, to mark every, uh, I have to do increases so every so many rows, and so I'm using a length of yarn to mark that. So then I don't even have to have my pattern or stitch markers or anything, I just have that length of yarn. So again, I think that I wanna do a tutorial on IGTV just to show that really quick because it's a super easy, quick technique. You just need to see like a minute or two and you will have it down. So hopefully I will have that um, coming out soon. I forgot to say in the beginning that I am wearing my mic this week. I hope that it is working out fine. I have used it um, for other videos where I've just done little short segments, but not for a long one yet. So I'm really hoping that it's working. Please, please be working. I just listened to the first part of the video and it seems fine, but the issue I was having is that um, videos always sound different when you're just listening to them off of the phone or if you have headphones. So what I usually do is edit my video um, one way and then listen to it back a different way to see if there are any of those issues. So fingers crossed that we have no issues. If not, I will be ordering a new mic and getting it before next week. But I wanna go into questions today. I'm going to do answer tons of questions um, this week because I don't have a ton of knitting content um, and I'm gonna get all caught up. So I'm really excited to do that. So first I'm gonna answer the questions that you guys asked on Instagram for me and Marina. Don't forget that her podcast will be linked down below and you can go watch her episode um, to see how she answers the questions. Now she is a yarn dyer. So her question or her answers are gonna be different than mine. Um, some of the questions I'm gonna be answering like for about patterns and she's gonna answer them about yarn. So it should be really fun to hear her answers. Okay, question number one. 
what pattern are you most well known for? Okay, so I would say that up until last month, I was probably most well known for the float tote. Um, float tote is this right here. It's just a simple little crochet tote that has little buckets inside for you to um, hold your yarn. But now I feel like a lot of people know me because of my yarn cozies. So that has been a super popular pattern, my most popular by far, and um, which has been really incredible and just humbling. Um, but I think that that's probably what people know me for right now are my cozies. I have lots of cozy pattern, yarn cozies, can cozies, bottle cozies, and more cozies are coming. So that's probably what I'm most well known for right now. Question number two. Um, what is a pattern that you weren't happy with the first time you created it, but now you love it? I should have thought of that answer beforehand. Hmm, I can't think of one that I... I guess maybe my pattern that I had the hardest time creating was Architectura. It was just a lot of new for me, a lot of new techniques, mosaic knitting, um, brioche. I was kind of creating some different things in there and it was just a really hard process. Um, plus we delayed the release of it by several months um, and I think that ended up being a good thing. Now I see other people making Architectura and it's super, super cool to see their version. So I am definitely um, pleased with it. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful pattern, um, but one that was hard at first. Okay, question number three is, do you knit English or continental? And do you ever want to, or do you ever change it up or want to change the way that you knit? So I knit English style, which means I hold the yarn in my right hand while I am knitting. Um, and I do sometimes knit continental, but usually just when I'm doing color work. So I'm knitting English and continental at the same time. So basically I'll hold one color in my right hand, one color in my left hand, and that way I don't have to pick up and drop um, when I'm doing color work. I have knit before where I've just done continental because they always say, I don't know who they is, but people always say that continental is faster and I, I kinda, I can see why it is faster, but for me, already being an English knitter, it's not faster. <laughs> and I guess I could learn. I know plenty of people who have converted, but for, it's just not for me. I am super comfortable knitting English style. And right now that's what I'm going to continue to do. Okay, who is your favorite designer? So I probably change my answer on this every time I'm asked this, but first person that came to mind for me was Hohi Locatelli. I just love her patterns. I love her aesthetic and I haven't made, well, the two things that I've made from her are my most worn things. My boxy sweater, I love wearing my boxy, and then behind me right now is my like a clouds uh, cardigan, whoops, which I have on the back of my desk chair because I wear it almost every day. I just put it on in the morning when it's a little cold or when the air conditioning comes on, and I just always have it around. So yeah, those two are from Hohi Locatelli, so I've gotta say that she's probably my favorite. Okay, last question. What advice do you have for someone who wants to start writing patterns? And remember, Marina's gonna be answering these for yarn, so she's gonna be talking about um, advice if you want to start dyeing yarn. Um, so if you wanna start writing patterns, um, my advice to you would be to just go for it. Um, I think that it's gonna, just know that it's gonna take a lot of time at first because, you know, it, it's almost like speaking another language, like you know how to read it, but now you have to write it and it can be kind of difficult. So I would just know that it's gonna take some time so that you can take your time with it and put your um, best, um, best self out there and also look at lots of other people's patterns. So anyone who has free patterns, you know, like that you admire, download them, look at the format, look at how they are doing things. If you have paid for patterns, um, uh, look at those two, not to copy them, please don't copy anyone's pattern, but basically just to look at like, what are things I need to include in my pattern? I need to include like a key, or do I wanna put an introduction in there? Some people have like a designer introduction. Um, that really helped me like looking at different people's pattern formats, decide how I wanted to format my own patterns. Um, and that's changed over time. I've gone back and updated some of my old ones and made them a little more like, contemporary with what I do now. Um, so whatever you do at first, don't worry. You can always change it and fix it later. You don't have to have 
all your ducks in a row just to get started. So my biggest advice is just start. Okay, so now I'm going to go into the Ravelry thread. Um, if you go to the Love and Stitches Ravelry group and go to the Ask Me thread, feel free to ask me any questions that you want about knitting or crochet or if you have other questions, I am happy to answer them. I'm actually going to get caught up on them today for a couple reasons, which I will explain uh, a little bit later on. But the first question is from A.S. Warren, and um, I didn't see what your name was. Hang on, what is your name? No name, that's okay, A.S. Warren. All right, um, this person asks, Hi Natalie, I love your podcast. You've inspired me to get out of my comfort zone with knitting. I was wondering if anyone has blatantly stolen any of your pattern ideas, ones that have already been published. If so, how did you handle it? If not, how would you handle it? Okay, so I that's super interesting that you asked that because um, I just made a video about answering all kinds of questions about like pattern writing and YouTube and Instagram. And one of the things that that made me stumble across is copyright laws. So what's really interesting is that you can't copyright an idea. So like I can't copyright the idea of a yarn cozy. Um, plus that was already out there. It's not like it was my original idea to begin with, but I, I couldn't copyright that idea. I could trademark the name if I wanted to, uh, but I don't because it's not worth it's not worth that but um you can't copyright an idea so that's what makes knitting and crochet patterns really really tricky because yes i put a copyright at the bottom of my pattern no people are not allowed to like reproduce it for their own um like sell my pattern or anything um but it is kind of tricky luckily as far as i know nobody has um, seem to or appear to have taken one of my patterns or ideas and sold it as their own, thankfully. Um, but I guess I do have a few things, or I've definitely thought about what I would do if that happened. Um, for me, I think the best thing would probably be to just kind of ignore it. <laughs> um, and I know that's really, really hard, especially when you know, you've worked so hard on something, you've put a pattern out there, and then it seems like somebody else has totally taken your idea. Um, so it totally depends on the situation, um, but I think that the best thing sometimes is just to, um, what's the right word? Like, keep your composure and just don't say anything. Um, it's definitely not okay to be like a bully in those types of situations. Um, I've seen it handled well and I've seen it handled poorly. So I try to like watch um, those makers that that's happened to and see like who would I want to be like if that ever happened to me. Um, so I think the thing that y the best thing to do in that situation is that you just have to know like your audience knows that that was your pattern and that they know to come to you for that idea and that they will probably respect you even more if you don't do anything nasty or mean about that. So that's probably, that's my best policy is just like, if you can't think of a way to handle it with grace, then it's best just to like not do it in that situation. So especially for a knitting pattern, like at the end of the day, it's a knitting pattern and it's, it's going to be gonna be okay <laughs> okay next question is uh, from obsidian 78 hi Natalie I'm a new subscriber and love your podcast I also knit and crochet as well I have a question about the gray wool slings with leather straps that are hanging in your calyx bookshelf that you store yarn in what is that called and where did you get it I'm organizing my yarn slash craft room and would like to get one for my calyx shelf to store my yarn as well so if you can see behind me I've got these slings. Um, I think, I don't know what this part is made of, but these are like faux leather and cloth here. Um, so this is an Ikea shelf, it's called Calyx. I'll put Calyx on the bottom for you. Um, and it's a very popular Ikea item. I dreamed forever to have one of these and I absolutely love it. Um, and when I bought my Calyx, I also got these uh, little hammocks from Ikea. I think they were called hammocks and I get questions on them every so often and unfortunately it doesn't look like they make them anymore so I don't think that you can actually buy these but when I did get them I got them from Ikea and I think they were called hammocks 
So if you ever go to like the Calyx accessories and then see what kind of like inserts and stuff they have, there's a chance they might have them there, but I have looked them up recently and I did not see them, unfortunately. All right, this question is from The Graceful Tangle, who is Amy Kate. Um, hey Natalie, I have kind of a business question for you today. So I recently started my own YouTube channel and podcast, The Graceful Tangle. I rebranded on my birthday and am more determined than ever to steadily and effectively grow my small business. My question is about YouTube. How do you upload videos? Is there a faster way? I just uploaded a 30 minute video and it took a while. I know your videos are sometimes longer than that and I wondered what your process is. Thank you so much, Amy Kate. Okay, so I've been getting a ton of questions like this lately about YouTube and Instagram and that inspired me to make a whole video answering all types of questions. So I'll make sure to link that. That's my new video this um, past week. But I did not answer this question specifically, which is why I wanted to bring it up on the podcast today. So whenever you have a, a video, um, usually if it's like 30, like let's just say it's 30 minutes, it might take longer than 30 minutes to upload. It just depends on a lot of different factors. It depends on your internet. It depends on who else is using the internet at the time. Um, it depends on the internet that day. I mean, there's just so many factors. So all I can say is what I do, <laughs> and it's been working pretty well for me. So I, um, I record on my phone, I edit on my phone, and I upload to YouTube on my phone. So what I do is at night, usually, I will um, plug my phone in, I will turn um, the screen, not the brightness, but the, uh, like, you know how it auto sleeps, like it'll just like turn off after two minutes or whatever if you're not touching the screen. I turn that off so that it never goes dark. For some reason, this makes a difference and I don't know why. Um, so I do that and then I will go to YouTube and I will upload. So overnight seems to be a really good time for me because nobody is in the house or nobody is using internet in the house overnight. Um, so there's a lot less traffic. I mean, even in our neighborhood, you know, people aren't probably up in the middle of the night using the internet. So it tends to upload pretty fast. I do sometimes do this in the morning because I wake up early um, and it seems to work pretty well then. So I usually have a podcast anywhere from 30 to 30 minutes to an hour and it takes probably it actually, for me, will take less time than the video length to upload most days. Not the case for every video, but it does tend to work that way. So again, I plug my phone in, I make sure that it's the screen's never gonna go dark because for some reason that makes a difference, and then I start the upload, and I just every so often go back and check on it. I also make sure that my phone is like in the same room as the Wi-Fi router. If I bring it down here where um, my yarn room is, it's way far away because the Wi-Fi router is on the third floor in our bedroom and it is much slower. So I make sure it's in the same room as the Wi-Fi router, walk away, and it usually uploads in under an hour. So that's my advice for you. Hopefully, if you're using a different kind of device, you can like translate that to how that would work for you. But overnight seems to be a pretty good way to do it. All right, just a couple more questions. This one is from Lee Yost. Hi Natalie, I'm an avid knitter crocheter who also lives in a very hot place. My husband and I are actually making the move up north after living our whole lives almost 30 years in the south. I'm looking forward very much to being able to enjoy my knitwear more and have been making lots of pieces to prepare. My question is, I've heard you mention the heat in Texas. Would you ever consider moving to a milder climate? Even if just not for knitwear reasons, lol. Thank you, Lee. Oh, that's so cool. Well, that's exciting that you guys are moving and doubly exciting that you'll get to wear your knitwear more often. Um, would I ever consider wearing somewhere, or wearing, moving somewhere with a milder climate? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have always lived in hot places. I was born in Georgia. I grew up in Tennessee. And then right after college, I moved to Texas. So I've always lived in the South or Southeast and I've always lived in hot places. It's just where I've lived. Um, I do stay inside a lot. <laughs> I love air conditioning. And when we went to visit Colorado last summer and we were staying in a place without air conditioning, I just couldn't stand. I like, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. We have the technology. Why don't we have air conditioning in this place? Like it was, it was too hot during the day to be 
in the place where we were staying. So I just don't understand that. But I would totally consider moving to a milder climate, provided I could have some air conditioning. Um, and that would be really, really great for knitwear. We don't have any plans right now to like make any moves or anything, but we know this being like a three-story townhome, it's not our forever home. So at some point in our lives, who knows when it will be, we will be leaving this place. Um, whether we leave Texas or not, I have no idea, but hey, life's an adventure, we will see. Okay, um, this question is from Allie, who is Nature's Cozy. Um, she says, hey Natalie, I'm wanting to crochet more and have fallen in love with amigurumi. I'm currently looking at the Disney patterns from Chia Crafts, which are free, but she does not have any yarn brand recommendations. Have you ever made amigurumis? And if so, is there a type of yarn you would recommend? Thanks, Allie. Okay, Allie, I went on way too long over like a research thing with this because I did not know the answer. So I actually went to Chia Crafts and she has adorable amigurumi patterns. And I downloaded her pattern because I thought for sure she would have said what weight yarn um, in the pattern. And I was really surprised to see that there is not a mention of the weight of yarn. Maybe I missed it because I just kind of skimmed over the materials list, but this is what I found. I found a list of the different colors of yarn with numbers beside it like three to three and a half, uh, two and a half, and two. And I thought, is that yarn? But two and a half, I don't understand. So then I realized that she means use this color yarn with this hook size. And she does talk about um, like respecting the sizes of the thread and hooks, but I don't know where the sizes of the thread are. So like I said, I went way too far into this <laughs> and I went to the um, Craft Yarn Council to look at their um, yarn weight and their symbols. So they have zero as lace weight yarn and seven as jumbo weight yarn. And then they have like what hook size you should be using for these yarns. So at least the pattern that I downloaded was anywhere from a two millimeter hook to a three and a half millimeter hook which is going to be super fine yarn or um, si wait, is it? Si weight one, size one yarn, which is fingering weight yarn. And then if you use a 3.25 to a 3.75 millimeter hook, you could potentially use a fine weight yarn, a number two weight yarn, which is sport weight. So that leads me to conclude <laughs> that in this in this specific pattern and probably most of her patterns you could be using fingering weight combined or not combined but like within the same pattern as sport weight yarn because you're going to be using all those different hook sizes um, now I don't know specifically of any different brands or yarn types just because um, I don't make amigurumis that's not something that I do a lot but I think that most people use acrylic yarn um, for amigurumis and I tried to look on like just online real quick for like sport weight and fingering weight acrylic yarns and I then I think I had to do something else <laughs> but I would definitely go to your local craft store and look for size one and size two yarns because it looks like that's what she is using in her patterns um, maybe it was just the one that I looked at but try to match up the uh, hook size with the yarn size and see from there. Now, as I am saying this, I'm thinking of one more factor. And if you crochet amigurumis, maybe you're saying this to me, but I do kind of remember somebody saying once that they actually use thicker yarn with smaller hooks for amigurumi. So that is an extra challenge. So potentially, you wouldn't want to use the tiniest yarn with the tiniest hook because you want it to be very dense. So you know what? I think we need some help. If you know more about amigurumis, will you help us out here? Will you reply to Allie's comment um, or Allie's question or leave a comment down in, the, in this uh, part of the podcast and let us know what should she be using? Because that's confusing, you guys. We gotta have we gotta have instructions on yarn in our patterns. I'm sure it is somewhere, and I just missed it. But that's kind of the rabbit hole that I fell down with that pattern, um, or with that designer, and she has the cutest patterns. Last question, and I am all caught up. This is from Chima Knits, who is Chantal. Um, 
Hi, Natalie. As you know, I'm a huge fan of your podcast patterns and toaster, of course. I remember you once mentioned knitting with your iPad. Do you mean that you follow the pattern on the iPad? Do you use a specific app for that? And when on the go, what do you use? My iPad is a little big to carry around and the phone may be a bit small. I'm old school and not very tech savvy. I always print my patterns to be able to cross off each completed row as I go and to take notes if any modification, for example. But I would love to save paper and trees if I could figure out how to knit with new technology that I have available at home anyways. Thanks, Chantal. I am so glad you asked me that question because I have something coming for you guys in just a couple weeks. I am going to take you through what I use um, for my patterns and how I do it on my iPad. But before, so just so that I don't leave you with absolutely nothing, I do use an app and I do, um, I have an iPad mini, so it's actually really, uh, it's like the perfect size because it fits in here in this little two skein float tote and it is not super heavy. So it's not a big iPad, it's a mini iPad, but it's bigger than my phone. And one reason that I love it so much more than paper is that I can actually uh, zoom in and blow up the words or that specific chart really, really big. And I just think that that, for me, that's a lot easier to see than paper because I my eyesight is not super great, especially up close when I'm wearing contacts to see far away. So that kind of helps solve that problem for me. Plus my notes are all in there. I'm not losing them or losing track of my place. So I will be sharing that with you very, very soon. Okay, let's get into some news. So I have had two new videos come out since last week. Um, the first is I did a live Q&A on Saturday. So that is now uploaded in its entirety. And you can go and watch that and just kind of like relive um, some of the time hanging out. I answered questions. Um, the chat is still there. So if you re if you watch that, you might want to drop down the chat and watch the chat replay because it kind of helps like um, helps the video make more sense. I did try to read off the questions that were in the chat, but just in case I don't do that every time, you'll be able to see what I was responding to. I also recorded a new video um, answering all of your questions. I got so many questions about YouTube, Instagram, and Ravelry as it pertains to having a small business. And so I decided to compile all that into one video. I thought it was gonna be like 30 minutes long and end up being almost an hour long. So if you are interested in that, go and watch it in chunks if needed. Um, but I think it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a really useful resource for people who are using Instagram and YouTube for their small businesses, um, but also for people that are just using them casually and maybe you want to um, grow your community or grow your reach, um, there's gonna be lots of information in there. So while it's very informative, I hope it's also entertaining in a way, kind of like the podcast is and that you get some enjoyment out of that. Um, secondly, I am going to be taking about a week off. I have not decided if it's going to be this current week, the one that I'm recording the podcast in, or if it's going to be next week. I was planning on it to be the second week of June, um, but with the some of the events going on um, in the world right now, it might be better to, um, it might be more respectful for me to go ahead and do it um, this week. Either way, you're getting this podcast at some point and one week you won't have a podcast. And the reason that I am doing that is I want to spend um, an entire week where I am focused on designs. So I am going to come back with not only two weeks of knitting content, but also I'm going to have uh, hopefully some new designs ready to test. I'm really, really excited. I'm also going to be, while I'm not gonna be posting any videos, I'm gonna be recording some videos. So you're gonna get lots and lots of new stuff coming up after that. I cannot wait. Um, so. Hopefully <laughs> you will see this podcast and know like why I'm not gonna be there for a week, but that it's gonna be even better than ever when I do come back after a week long break. So I'm really excited. I don't know if I will be taking a break off of Instagram too. I haven't really planned that out yet, but I will have a week with no um, video Tuesday and no video, no podcast on Thursday. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I did decide to do that. Um, and then I think that's it for news. So 
let's go into life. Um, so this, uh, no, last week, over the weekend, I cleaned our house. So my mother-in-law um, and my brother-in-law, they are in their new house. Well, my mother-in-law is. My brother-in-law is visiting from Florida, and so he is staying um, over at his mom's. And now our house is like back to normal. Actually, it's better than normal because before my mother-in-law came, we had some messes and some cluttered places, and now those are all cleaned up. And it just feels so, so good. Like every morning I walk downstairs and I see our nice tidy living room and that spot, that table that always had stuff on it is cleared and it feels amazing. My yarn room down here is looking better than ever. I'm actually kind of inspired right now to rearrange some furniture and like redecorate. So we'll see, that might be coming soon. Um, if you are interested in seeing all of the things that I cleaned and decluttered, head over to This and That, my cleaning and organization YouTube channel. Um, I feel like that those kinds of videos, I love watching them while I'm cleaning. So if you need something to watch while you're cleaning, head over there and you can watch that. Also, it's only day two of the Harry Potter Summer Reading Challenge, but it's already been really nice. I've been starting off my mornings instead of coming down and getting on my computer watching YouTube while I kind of get some work done and try to knit. Instead, I've been stopping on the second floor of our house where we have our kitchen and living room, sitting in my chair with my coffee and my knitting and listening to a chapter of Harry Potter. Um, it's just been a really good change to my morning routine. Instead of feeling like I need to get right to work, I have that 30 minutes or so of just calm and knitting. Plus it means I'm getting more knitting done <laughs> and it's just a really great way to start the day. So I've been really loving that. Okay, lastly, um, bringing me joy. Um, this week has been, I think for everybody, especially dark. Um, and it's really hard to find places to celebrate when I know that others are hurting. Um, so I really hope that Nitty Natty, Love and Stitches, that, that my spaces can be a light for you um, and that knitting and crochet can bring you comfort in hard times. Um, I love seeing our community, meaning the knitting and crochet community um, band together and band, is band the right word? Get behind others that are hurting and lift them up and support them. And it's just, it's amazing to watch but it's very heavy and it's very hard. Um, so I, again, just hope that when you come into my space that you feel welcome, that you feel like you can maybe even escape some of the, the hardships of the world for just a minute to have a little bit of fun and a little bit of peace. Um, anyway, I will see you guys in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> leaving you with that. Um, I hope to come back with lots and lots of new and exciting things and more energy and I will just see you guys then. I think I got to put a toaster clip here at the end to just, I don't know, end things sweetly. So he's, he's sleeping right next to me, which is adorable. So I'll try to put that in, but I love you guys and I will see you again soon. Bye. Hey bud. What you doing? Aww.